Hello, everyone. Welcome today. Hi. Um, so we're going to have a conversation about biotech in New York City, how we got here, where we're going, um, some lessons learned, uh, what opportunities you may have to take advantage of. Um, but before we do that, I'm going to ask uh, each of the panelists to introduce themselves and give a little bit of context. I've also uh, I've asked uh, I've asked them not only to focus on what they're doing now, but considering we're at an academic institution and many of the folks in the room are either students or graduate students, um, to talk a little bit about how they got where they are, um, where their career started. We'll just spend a couple of minutes on that before getting into the panel itself. Um, I realized I should introduce myself. I know some of you, but not all. My name's Oren Herskowitz. Uh, I run the tech transfer office for the university. Um, which means when the faculty members here at the university come up with, and the graduate students come up with new scientific innovations, our office is responsible for helping to get those inventions, and we get around 350 a year from across the university in all fields. Uh, we're responsible for working with the faculty and the graduate students to get those inventions into the market and out of the labs so they can become products that help the world. That's basically what we're about. Uh, we also are involved in a, in a few different technology accelerators, so we run, uh, run or help run the New York City Media Lab, which you'll hear about later today, PowerBridge New York, which is a $10 million proof of concept center for clean energy startups. Uh, we help with the Coulter uh, Translational Partnership, which does the same thing but for medical devices. And we're also involved with the new Therapeutics Accelerator here at Columbia, which is an NIH-funded accelerator to try and get new drugs to market as quickly as possible to save people's lives. So that's me. Um, Karen, if I could ask you to introduce yourself. Sure. Um, thank you for having me here today. It's very exciting to be with you all. Um, my name is Karen Heidelberger. I work at Deerfield Management, which is a healthcare investment firm, and we have a little over $8 billion under management. We focus solely on healthcare um, and all stages of um, a company's life cycle. So, really, from seed all the way to very mature companies. Deerfield, over the past several years, has taken um, a foray much earlier than many other firms do. And part of that is because we recognize that institutions like Columbia have amazing science that's going on. And it is our mission to advance healthcare. And if we're going to be doing that, we think it's really important that we're able to partner with um, institutions like Columbia so that we can help get that amazing technology from out of the lab and to the patients. Now we understand that that's a really long process and takes a lot of time and energy so Deerfield over the past several years has really focused a lot on building up its organizational talent so that we have the ability to help scientists build their companies and help them also understand really what a, a good solid drug development path would be to, for that different technology. That's a little bit about Deerfield. Um, I personally uh, went to Cornell University. I graduated from the hotel school there, so doing something way different now than I ever thought that I would be doing. Um, but from there, I went directly to Wall Street and went to Merrill Lynch, which sadly is no longer really around, um, but was in M&A there. I did that for several years, and then I went to Harvard Business School. I graduated from Harvard, and my intention was to go back to Merrill Lynch. Um, at the time, the organization um, uh, really only promoted people that were producers and M&A life is a difficult life so I decided that I would take what I thought was going to be an easier route and went into trading. I traded at Deerfield for, excuse me, um, at Merrill for a handful of years with the with the plan that I was going to be a great trader and I was going to go into management and solve Merrill Lynch's problems and be CEO and all that kind of fun stuff. Um, that definitely changed. I wound up um, meeting the head trader at Deerfield a uh, gentleman by the name of Jeff Kaplan, if you ever have the opportunity to meet him, he's very into social entrepreneurship, an awesome guy for people to meet. Um, but he brought me into Deerfield where I traded at Deerfield for about 10 years. And several years ago, I've been at Deerfield for now 15 years. Several years ago, I moved into our partnership and communications role. So I have the wonderful um, time and ability to work with people like Oren, um, and we work together on different types of collaborations, but also helping on take that science that I was talking about to um, 
to the patients. And if I think if there was one word, you know, we were talking a little bit about, you know, how you get to where you are. Um, and I think, you know, what always comes to my mind, and I said this back when we were chatting earlier, is that it's really serendipity and hard work. You know, I was lucky enough to meet Jeff Kaplan on that one day, and it really was a day that I met him for. Um, that it changes your life. And I think if you have to be able to look at different situations and take advantage of the opportunities that's handed to you, but make sure that you work really hard along the way. And, and just for context, how many folks work at Deerfield, roughly speaking? Um, we are a little bit different than your ordinary uh, venture firm. And um, as I said, we've taken the foray into earlier stage, so a lot of people think of us now as a venture firm. Uh, we have over 100, but Deerfield's organized um, not the way your traditional venture firm would be organized. So we have about 35 investment folks. Um, and then we have what we call the Deerfield Institute, which are topic-specific experts. And that's part of the talent that I was talking about that really helps scientists take their science from the bench to the patient. Um, and it focuses on very specific things, such as epidemiology and clinical trial design, biostatistics, primary secondary market research. So we're a big team, but we're not your average bear, really. Right. And you said of the 8 billion or so under management, about a quarter of that is for early stage life science. That's right. OK, great. Thank you. Uh, John, maybe I could ask you to go next. Sure. Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm John Cunningham. Uh, thank you for having me here today, Warren. Uh, I am uh, from Washington, D.C., actually. I uh, commute up here to New York every week. And uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm from Washington, but I'm not with the government. But I am here to help you, so I'm trying to make that little joke there. Um, I went to University of Maryland, and I started my first company when I was at University of Maryland. It didn't work out, but it was something that I wanted to take the risk to do. Um, it was back in the early 80s. It was before internet, before everything, and it was actually kind of a video-related company, which led to the next thing, led to the next thing, led to the next thing, which is, you know, I, I'm sure if all that didn't happen, I wouldn't be here today. Uh, so like Karen said, I mean, it comes down to a little bit of hard work, being willing to take risks, and kind of following your heart, whether it works out or not, it leads to the next thing. So I've been in commercial real estate development for 30 years. Uh, I was a president of a company in Washington, D.C. for, I was with that company for 20 years. And uh, for 10, the last 10 of those years, I was uh, doing development work for Alexander Real Estate Equities, uh, which started in the late, or excuse me, mid 90s uh, as the first um, real estate investment trust uh, to develop uh, and own commercial life science properties. Um, I joined the company 10 years ago, and uh, now I'm a senior vice president, regional market director here in New York, uh, really pioneering this region. So Alexander is the largest owner, operator, and developer of commercial life science properties in the world. Um, we are in all the major science clusters in the United States. Cambridge is, of course, our largest market, San Francisco, Seattle, San Diego, Ra Raleigh, Washington, D.C., around NIH. Uh, and New York is our newest cluster, which I think is very exciting uh, and very different than every other cluster where we are. So uh, what we do here is totally different than what my colleagues do elsewhere. Uh, and I'm sure we'll talk about that some today. But uh, it, it's a really exciting place to be, largely due to the fact that we have great universities like Columbia here with tremendous entrepreneurs and great science. Uh, so when we were selected by Mayor Bloomberg in 2004 to develop the what was then called the East River Science Park, uh, we, we started uh, two buildings, 730,000 square feet, totally spec. The market crashed in the middle of uh, that, the, the development of the first building. And uh, so we had it delivered in October of 2010 uh, in probably the worst economic market you can imagine, totally empty. And uh, we were fortunate to talk uh, Eli Lilly into when they bought uh, Mclone to stay in New York and uh, really pursue what we kind of envisaged as a very exciting uh, opportunity to grow this cluster. Uh, since then, they've done very well. We've brought in a total of, I think we have almost 30 companies at the center now with about 1,500 people working there. Several of these companies are actually spun out of Columbia, um, some of which are Gordana's here, she'll talk about. Um, so it, it, we've been very fortunate to work closely with the community and have a shared vision that has really evolved into growing this cluster. Um, so again, thank you for having me here. It's a pleasure to be here. Great. And John, just for, again for the startups in the audience, uh, you also have a venture fund. Can you tell us a, br a little bit about the Alexandria Venture Fund? That's right. So I think we made our first investment in 1996. The company was started in 94. So in investing in um, 
primarily life science. We've done a few tech deals. I think Google was one of our first tenants in one of their first offices, funny enough, uh, which has actually worked out pretty well. Um, and so we have invested about $400 million into companies that are not our tenants. Some, some happen to be tenants, some ultimately become tenants. It's totally different. Than, it's not dependent upon that. Uh, in fact, in New York, I think we've um, possibly invested more than anybody else over the last few years into early stage companies that stay in New York. We've invested about $25 million into New York companies over the last few years. Um, so this is something that we have a, a team of 13 uh, people, uh, PhDs, scientists uh, that do all the underwriting. We stay very involved with the companies to help them grow uh, and analyze them. But uh, that has actually led to something exciting we're doing here in New York now. It's, it's called the Launch Lab. It's a new incubator for early stage, seed stage companies um, that we're going to help try to develop and, and keep companies in Manhattan you know, within this footprint. So the Venture Fund, to me, our science team is, the, is really the secret sauce of our company. And you know, they really understand the science. I am not a scientist. I develop science buildings. Uh, but our team is, is very involved in working with the scientists and, and really staying ahead of the cutting edge you know, ideas of what's out there. Great. Thank you. Gordada, I'll turn it over to you. Sure. Thank you so much. This is for invitation. This is a great panel. So um, I'm Gordana Bunyak Novakovic. I'm a professor at Columbia University. Um, I'll start with my background just to tell you a little bit about where I came from and how I ended up here. So I'm a, I'm a chemical engineer with passion for medicine. So when I graduated, when I got my PhD um, and landed on a faculty job in Belgrade in Serbia, which is my home city, I was really trying to find out how to find something in medicine where I can really make make a difference so to define my research field. And this search actually started in Boston on during one year when I was there on Fulbright and I was very fortunate to be at the place where tissue engineering was just evolving as a discipline. This was a very the very beginning. To be honest, when I came to Boston I actually never heard these two words together. So this was like the real, real beginning. And you know how it is in life. I mean you know what you want, but you don't know always what it is, but then you see it and you know, this is it. So this really happened, like this aha moment. And since it is now 24 years that I started to work in this field, and I've always been super happy about making this choice.